So in addition to the geographic uh, coordinate system, latitude and longitude, I want you to be able to talk about the universal transmercator uh, system and the state plane coordinate system. Both of these are grid systems that are used to use for location. So the UTM was developed by the National Imagery and Mapping Agency and it was a much more um, accurate and easy to use system where the world is divided into 60 zones running north and south. Each zone is 6 degrees wide, so 6 times 60 is 360 and 360 degrees is the whole circumference of the Earth. Um, so if we look at these divisions, um, you can see that um, Oregon is in uh, zone 10 of the UTM system and we'll zoom in on that and here is zoom ten, or zone 10 and uh, you can see that we're between 126 degrees west longitude and 120 degrees west longitude and then the eastern part of the state is in zone 11. So when you measure uh, UTM coordinates measuring in meters and you're only using two measurements a northing and an easting so in UTM, uh, for the northern hemisphere, the equator is set as the origin and you add meters as you go toward the North Pole. So all the way to the North Pole is about um, 10,000 meters. So we're in Oregon, in Eugene, we're close to 5,000 meters north and so we're about halfway between the equator and the North Pole. In the middle of each six degree uh, panel, or zone is a, uh, a meridian, three degrees on each side, and then west of that meridian, 5,000 or 500,000 meters west of that meridian is a, what's called a false easting or a starting point um, origin. Um, when you look at UTM, it only measures to about 84 degrees in the north, about 80 degrees in the south. Uh, in the southern hemisphere. So let's just kind of look at this a little bit. So here's the northern zone. Um, the origin is the equator and you can see the, the um, uh, zone gets more narrow as you get to the pole because of the, the shape of the earth. And down the middle of this is a meridian um, that runs uh, down the center of each panel. In the southern uh, hemisphere starts counting at zero at the South Pole, so that's the southern origin, and 10,000 meters is uh, the um, positive value or the, or the highest value in the southern hemisphere, and it ends at the equator. Um, so if you're using zones, um, you need to include whether it's in the north zone or the south zone, or you can use these extra um, indicators here along the side so that Oregon is in uh, zone 10T. So I don't have to put north or south. So here's another way just if I were doing uh, the southern tip of South America that would be zone 18F, oh, right? Instead of saying 18 south, zone 18 south. So the easting then um, for each of these panels is determined um, at 500,000 500, meters uh, west of the origin. So here's the origin. There's three degrees to the west, three degrees to the east. And they start counting uh, in what's called a false easting. So start counting over here. And by the time I measure uh, with a ruler to this point, I should be at 5,000, 500,000 meters east of that origin. Okay. So in order to use that on a topographic map, um, you look at the, the southern or the south um, eastern corners of the map and you'll see um, the full UTM here. So this is 4,678,000 uh, meters north of the equator. And these blue tick marks um, are uh, 1,000 meters. If you um, look at, the, at a seven and a half minute uh, map, um, topographic map of Oregon, um, we're going to assume 
um, we're in the northern hemisphere. Where is my other? Hold on, I've got another map down here. Here we go. So this tells you where your zone is, bottom corner of your map. And then if you look at your graphic scale on the map, you can make a little ruler um, in kilometers and in 100 meter increments. And that will let you do some very careful measurement. So basically, what I did was I found the unit, uh, the UTM measurement right here. I laid down my paper ruler. I added up. Um, so I added 300 meters and my northing is 4,678,300 meters north. My easting, you have to remember if you're counting to the west, you're actually subtracting because you're going back to zero. So uh, there was a UTM mark here um, and I was able to count backwards uh, or subtract 700 meters and get that location. And I think I put in another little video that you can take a look at. So um, in class we practice doing um, this map in UTM and in uh, lat long. The state plane um, coordinate system uh, also uses some Mercator projections, but it also uses a different projection called uh, a conic projections. So here's an example of a, a Mercator projection. It's called, it, the type is cylindrical. Uh, Lambert is a conic projection. And so these are ways that um, the curved surface of the Earth can be drawn on a flat surface with less distortion, depending on um, the shape of the area that you're, that you're mapping. So with a conic um, projection, you have two standard parallels. And so if this parallel and this parallel are the tangent lines in my conic projection, um, then my map is going to be more accurate along those projections. And we're a little bit ahead of ourselves because we'll have to talk about projections next week. But I wanted you to know these two different methods so that when we look at state plane, you have a better understanding. Um, in the 30s, the state plane projection was developed, and this was a way to kind of ignore the curvature of the Earth and map uh, different state areas in small, um, small increments. It's about four times more accurate than the UTM because it focuses on small areas. So to do this, um, they had to divide the state into uh, state plane sections or state plane zones. So in Oregon, we have a northern zone and a southern zone. Um, and you can see that Oregon has more of an orientation east and west. And so the conic projection is used in Oregon um, to create those maps. In Florida, um, there were three zones created in Florida. And in these two zones, the Mercator projection was used because they're more linear north-south and you can get a nice long meridian down the center of those sections. But in this panhandle section of Florida, um, a, a conic projection, the Lambert projection, was used. So when you look at um, state plane projections, um, they are either in feet or in meters. Uh, the ones on topographic maps that we use often uh, mention feet. Um, and so, actually, for this map, I need to change this to meters west. Um, so let's look at Pennsylvania. Obviously, run its bigger east-west than it is north-south, so they've used a conic projection. They've set up two parallels. And in uh, State Plain, they have an arbitrary or a false no uh, origin. So they drop their beginning measurement down below the area they want to measure, and you start measuring up uh, from that. Um, they also have a false easting. So they'll start actually measuring. Uh, this could be the, the origin. And then they'll start measuring from this side over to um, across the state. And again, this is uh, in this map, it's in. I'm going to put that in in meters. Here we go. But usually, like I said, on the topo maps, you're going to see it in feet. Um, these measurements are listed along the edge of the topo map, so, so you can take a look at those. I have a couple links um, to uh, give you some more information about. Um, Let's take a look at that one, if that will open that hyperlink, um, about some practice for uh, state plane and UTM. Let's 
Let's see, did that open? Maybe. Yeah, so this is a little um, a little app that you can download and it gives you some practice uh, locating UTM points. And basically, I think you have to uh, start the app right here so we can click on that app to launch it. And what it does is it puts um, so it gives you an idea of where it is. So there, there it is. And you choose uh, the point and try to um, type in what, what the uh, UTM would be. So it's a nice little way to practice. Okay. So that's the state plane UTM on the exam. You will have to measure, uh, find a location in UTM.